Hi, this is my first ever digital multimeter I had when I was a kid and I got it out of our storage and wah 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 it looks like the LCD has failed. What a sad end for my very first digital multimeter. This is a Saw ME533 uh, and it dates from the early 80s. So I didn't actually buy this multimeter. It was actually uh, gifted to me secondhand by a cousin of mine who I think I only met like once or something. But anyway, he heard I was into electronics. He was at that time a pinball uh, repair technician. So he actually gave me a whole bunch of pinball uh, PCBs plus this multimeter plus a bunch of uh, magazines and um, yeah this was my first ever introduction to digital multimeters if you want to see my first ever multimeter I've shown there in fact I've shown both of these uh, before but this was the first ever multimeter I purchased when I was a real youngster with my uh, pocket money this is the Tandy Micronta 22201U it's got two jewels thank you very much look at that bad boy oh, 20k ohms per volt it was beautiful and uh, that served me uh, for quite a long time until I got this digital multimeter. Now, um, I actually thought this was the duck's guts at the time because I couldn't afford a digital multimeter at the time. Um, so this was absolutely amazing. And I was very sad when in 1986, Fluke actually released this ad here. And I'll put it up. Um, it's uh, how to beat the high cost of cheap meters. And it was a marketing campaign extolling the virtues of you know, buying a good quality multimeter and look what's in the background it's not this exact model but it is a saw multimeter it's the one with the extra uh, 10 amp input uh, which my one doesn't have my one's only got a 200 milliamp uh, range so yes the fluke marketing did work on me and after that I lusted for a fluke multimeter and but I never got one until I got one second hand somewhere. I did uh, actually get one at my first uh, job when I was 17 though, so eh. But I didn't own one personally uh, until I got one uh, second hand quite some time later. Anyway, um, yeah, the ME533 digital multimeter. So I thought we'd just take a look at this uh, venerable old thing and uh, see, well, if it's still anything still comes up on the LCD, but uh, yeah, it looks like all the uh, magic smoke, the magic uh, liquid crystals have escaped that one. Um, so yeah, I doubt this works anymore. But I thought this was the duck's guts when I was a kid. It even had low ohms mode, so it wouldn't turn on diodes in circuit. Oh, fantastic. And I only had volts, ohms, and 200 milliamp uh, mode. <laughs> so yeah, like not much functionality in it but it did the job. And there it is, made in Japan, all the best stuff's made in Japan. The ME533, DC 3 volts, 5 milliwatts, thank you very much. Um, Saw Corporation, uh, don't know what that, oh yeah, that's right. Um, that's to hold, That's some electrical tape to hold in the screw. I think the screw on the back of this, um, it kept falling out or stripped or something. So yeah, I think I put some tape on there to hold it in and it's still there. But uh, sadly, uh, look at this. We've come a gutter. Some pretty horrible looking uh, battery leakage uh, corrosion, even into the fuse compartment there. Look at that. So, yeah, anyway, let's uh, take it apart and then uh, uh, we can clean up the contacts and, uh, well, see if she works. And sure enough, that screw just <laughs> came straight out with the tape. Oh, there's just no thread left at all on that. Oh, unbelievable. So, let's see if we can. I think that. No, does the knob, I thought the knob lifted off for some reason, but no, let's, uh, there's some clips up the top, there we go, and let's look inside, shall we, oh, look at that, what a Bobby Dazzler, or through hole, thank you very much, none of that surface mount, well, there is surface mount rubbish on the other uh, side there, but uh, yeah, look at this, uh, there we go, we've got uh, some alfoil on the uh, front there, with uh, some exposed there. Got the springy from the com. I uh, go up to that and like it's just an old school off the shelf uh, wafer switch there with a whole bunch of uh, through hole uh, resistors and caps. Uh, vertical arrangement. Thank you very much to save space. Little watch crystal there. Um, ugh, yeah, really have to clean that up. But uh, now that's interesting down here. Has that been cut and resoldered? I'm not sure what's what's doing there exactly, but. Uh, yeah, anyway, let's get the rest of this board out. You can see, obviously, around here, as a kid, I've had a few hacks at uh, trying to get this knob off. So, uh, well, in the 
true tradition of my youth. Let me get... Oh, no. Oh, did I, like, glue that sucker back on or something? What did I do to it? That ain't coming off. Uh, pair of pliers on there. And just as a vintage thing, uh, these are actually one a pair of my original pliers from back in the day when I would have um, had this multimeter, I think. I think it belonged to my old man, I'm not sure. Anyway, look at this, made in England. Elliot, uh, Elliot Lucas, is it? If you can read that. Anyway, um, there you go. I still have these pliers and I still use them. And I've shown this before, this is my favourite screwdriver. This is one that I had as a kid and I still have it and I still use it. Um, yeah, it looks like I put some like permanent marker down in, <laughs> down in there or something. But yeah, um, so this is uh, quite old. <laughs> Older than a lot of people watching this video, as is this multimeter. All right, let's see if we can pull this knob off. That's what she said. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. That came out relatively easily, actually. Uh, yeah, looks looks like I've put some uh, tape under there to uh, try and hold that in. So I took it apart too many times. Oh, boy, look at that. Isn't that crusty burger? Um, <laughs> what's going on here? Um, that's like waxy. That's like waxy stuff. Did I put that there? Maybe. But, oh, look at the corrosion around here. Pretty terrible. Anyway, uh, there's one surface mount jobby. If you've got any idea what one that is, then uh, please let me know. No, that would not be a good date code. It's got 9773 on it. I have uh, had a quick look for that. Couldn't find any info whatsoever. So if you have any info on that, please leave it in the uh, comments. But uh, obviously, calibration done by a couple of uh, trimmers here. I think I did calibrate it at the time against some sort of reference I cobbled together. Can't remember exactly. But yeah, you can really see that LCD now. Look at that. It's gone all blackity doo -da. Um, Yeah, that's... I greatly doubt that is going to work at all. But hey, I'll clean it up and uh, see what we can do. Unfortunately, some of the uh, solder masks just came clean off there. Um, it just flaked off like it was nothing. So, yeah, um, some corrosion has gotten into here, unfortunately. Uh, if I power it up, unfortunately, yeah, nah, nothing, as you'd expect. Um, not a sausage. And it is drawing 0.3 milliamps, which at uh, 3 volts is uh, just under... A uh, micro is just under a milliwatt, so um, so much for the five milliwatts. I don't know. Let me change range. No, 0.3. No, same on all of them, and that's off. So let's take the uh, LCD off here. It's just got uh, four clips at the back. There's going to be a zebra strip under there, and Bob's your uncle. All right, this is going to be quite stuck down with age, but oh yeah, look at that. There's no corrosion on the contacts. That's good. Um, yeah, you can see the corrosion up on uh, a couple of terminals up there. It's not great, but it's still intact because, uh, you know, it was turning on. We're getting some sort of current consumption, so I don't think they're broken. There you go. You can make out the uh, segments in there. It's a uh, three and a half digit, uh, 2000 count, 1999, uh, with a couple of the requisite symbols. Now, the problem is, of course, that uh, LCDs are custom. So it's not like I can just find a drop-in replacement for this unless I got, like, a second-hand saw meter. I had a quick look on eBay. Couldn't find any. Um, so, yeah, that's just... It's just gone-ski. So, unfortunately, that is one of the failure modes of uh, LCDs. Of course, you can get, like, replacement ones for the big brand names like Fluke, for example. In, in fact, you know, a lot of Fluke LCDs uh, fail, especially considering that the meters last, you know, 30, 40 years. Um, and then there's a, you know, it's quite a decent market out there for replacement LCDs. But something like this, unfortunately, not. Now, yes, of course, I have done my own series of videos on designing and manufacturing your own low-cost um, LCD. But, you know, it's going to cost many, many hundreds of US dollars uh, minimum just to do that, plus a lot of uh, time and effort. But uh, it is possible if I can, uh, I should be able to get in there and oh, I need to, oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, look, look, I can see the, can see the fluid. I don't know if you're seeing that, but I can see the, 
I can see the fluid moving. <laughs> yeah, that's one sick puppy. So I don't think it's worth it to uh, design a new custom LCD replacement just for a one-off like this. Uh, but I don't know, leave it in the comments if anyone's actually got one, uh, like an old meter or, you know, was this a common LCD used in many different brands back in the day? I don't know. Okay, just thought we'd have a squiz under the microscope here. And yeah, look, look you, you can see fluid inside there moving. Check it out. Yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I shouldn't. It, it's terrible, Muriel. It really is. Um, a sad end to the LCD. But apart from that, it is still sealed. You can really see that fluid moving. Look at that. Oh, no. Press F in the chat to pay your respects to this venerable multimeter. My first ever digital multimeter. I did so much with this. I learned so much from it. Don't know what all that is. That's kind of odd. Check out that patterning over there. Look at that. I can try and um, delaminate it, peel the reflective back off. That's like some sort of water liquid thing in there. I know the name is liquid crystal display, but actually I suspect this might just come apart. Look, look, there seems to be a gap up there. So yeah, this is, no and I think, oh, whoa. Whoa, there you go. Um, yeah, well, there's your problem. Um, this liquid, wow, that's, that's just lifting off. Wow, okay, oh, that's just a, oh, there you go, you can see, you can see the patterning on there. Have a look at the rest of it, there you go. There's the actual segments, if I get the light angled correctly, you'll be able to see, there you go, so it's got AC. It's got a battery symbol, that's right, and then the 1888, and then over there, millivolts, amps, and K ohms, and L for low power. That's right. So we can see this. You could actually reverse engineer this pretty easy. Wouldn't be that hard, but whether or not it's worth actually, you know, spending the coin to get a replacement LCD or not. Is, and I don't like, um, you know, going to the LCD manufacturers and going, oh, you know, please make me a one-off. Like, some of them will do it, but they don't really specialise in it. It's not their thing. They'll, like, grudgingly do it um, in hope that you'll order more. But if you go to them and say, Pl I, I only plan on buying one. It's like, or I plan on buying a hundred. It's like, eh, no. So sadly, she is gone. There's no fixing that, I'm afraid. Ah, uh, can we get that off? Yeah, yeah, we can. So what this looks like is um, the polarizing film that has completely come a gutter. Because um, if we it's still got its polarizing properties, check that out. No worries, but uh, yeah, it just it just looks horrible. So it's completely gonski. So it seems like uh, the liquid in there was the liquid crystals. Um, it just, like, there didn't seem to be any seal in there, and there's no, like, there's no, like, little ridges on there to, like, there seemed to be no seal around the outside or anything to, um, to really keep that in. You know, like, there's no, like, well in there to, like, keep it in, and then you glue the top one on, for example, because that's how most LCDs are. They're like a sealed unit. You normally can't get them apart as easily as I did. It literally just like fell apart, really. Um, I didn't put any force on it at all. Like I said, there's no well in it or anything to, to uh, sort of like keep that fluid in there. So I, I don't know how this <laughs> LCD was, was manufactured and stayed... Um, is it just some El Cheapo manufacturer? I'd, if you've got any clue how this particular style of LCD was actually manufactured and how they kept the liquid in there, um, please leave it in the comments because I don't know. <laughs> i got no idea. Yeah, I really need to photograph these in the right light. <laughs> I'll try and do that. Um, but yeah, you've got your top and bottom electrodes. But yeah, this is a basic reflective type LCD. I mean, it's as basic 
LCD construction as you can get. And it wasn't even sealed. These things came apart like real easy. Because technically the electrode should still work. Right? <laughs> you still see the contacts along there. And all the segments are in place and everything. And we've got our reflective back in. And to show you that these are genuinely conductive tracers. They're not super low impedance. But they do actually conduct. So let's say that one there. Up to there. There you go. See, it's 30k. If we put it closer, 1k. See? So it is actually it is actually conductive. And that's how the zebra strips work. Because of course these are um, these take LCDs basically take no current at all. It's an electric field uh, thing. That's how it works. It aligns the uh, liquid crystals in the electric uh, field. It it does alternate. Um, so there is some like capacitive uh, type. Uh, you know, power dissipation in an LCD, but otherwise they are perfectly conductive, like that. So these, the two glass conductive sheets, um, which form the top and the bottom electrode of the uh, reflective LCD, then you've got your reflective coating on the bottom. So in theory, I guess it's possible to fix this. <laughs> If I actually got, well, it looks like you've got to get some new polarizer film for it. Um, that's pretty easy. Uh, you can just cut it to size. But then, somehow, I've got to get new liquid crystal stuff. I believe you can, like, buy it in a bottle, I think. Maybe. I don't know. I think I've seen that mentioned uh, somewhere. Like, people have done their, manufactured their own LCDs, and you can buy the little liquid crystals, uh, fluid stuff so maybe but then how fluidy is it i mean my one was like it was like just water or something it was it was crazy so yeah and given that there's no like well in there to like keep it in place because i can imagine you know if it if it had like a well machined in there you could like syringe in you know a, a bit of liquid crystal or something and then you could put some glue around the outside of the ridge and then you could glue the the top element back on and then eh, Maybe, but um, yeah, I mean, this was inside. This uh, Usually the polarizer is outside of the LCD uh, segments, not like integrated in there. So I'm not, I don't know, that construction just seems a bit oddball to have the, uh, the polarizer material in the middle like that and no ability to trap the liquid crystals in there. I don't get it. Anyway, uh, interesting, huh? Leave it in the comments down below if you've seen that or if you think that is fixable. Because in theory, maybe. Hmm. This might have to be a part one. <laughs> Thoughts and comments down below. And as always, check out the evlog.store. Catch you next time.